Matthew chapter 25. And I've been, I've been preaching on the Holy Ghost the last few weeks. I ain't through with the subject yet. I changed the title a little bit, but I'm going to still got, get right back to the root of what we're dealing with. Amen? Amen? And so the question is asked today, Matthew chapter 25, starting at verse 29. Matthew 25, verse 29. If you don't have a Bible, raise your hand. If you want to look on with someone, that's great too. Amen? Amen. Now look to somebody and say, why do I need the Holy Ghost? Why do I need the Holy Ghost? Look to somebody else and say, why do I need the Holy Ghost? Why do I need the Holy Ghost? Why do you need the Holy Ghost? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I need him every day. Amen. In every way. Amen. Amen? They help me through what I'm going through. Amen? Amen? Now, you know, the power of the Holy Ghost gives you power over things that you once didn't have power over. Amen. Somebody say amen now. Amen. Where you used to say, I, I can't stop myself, I, I can't control myself, the Holy Ghost will give you power to say no. Amen. Come on, somebody say no. Amen. No. Don't say it like you mean it. No. Look at somebody and say no. 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 Well, y'all add to it and say, no way. No way. Then somebody say, way. Way. <laughs> All right, y'all with me on this. Matthew chapter 25, starting in verse 29. Why do we need the Holy Ghost? I found that this may going to sound strange, but I, God been dealing with me about this for these passages of Scripture down in 35 and 36 for a long time. And, 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 and I truly believe that that not only a book can be written from this, but it's going to teach you really why we're here on earth. Why do we not only need the Holy Ghost, but uh, why do we do the will of God the way we do? And what is the will of God? Now, many people don't know what the will of God is. They just think they're born and they die and they're on earth and they just live and accumulate and they die and then that's it and they go to heaven. But it's more to it than that. Amen. And we have a responsibility. When you're born in this world, you got a responsibility that accompany that. Amen? Amen? And you need the Holy Ghost in order to find out God's will. Look at somebody and say, you need. Look, you at, need. look at somebody around you and about. Touch them and say, excuse me. If they're looking at me, say, excuse me, I'm talking to you. Right? You need the Holy Ghost to help you to do God's will. Amen? Don't you? Amen? Amen. Because if you ain't doing God's will, you're doing the man's will and the devil's will. Amen. It ain't no in between. It's, it's either one or the other. And you're going to learn this in a minute. Amen? Amen? And it doesn't matter what your profession, what your position, your background, how educated, where you come from, or where your, your intentions are in life. It is important to know that you can do God's will anywhere. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And the will of God is to give thanks for all things. Amen? amen? amen. Verse 29 says, For unto everyone that have shall be given, and he shall have abundantly. But from him that have not shall be taken away even that which he had. Now, you don't want God to take nothing away that he gives you. Amen? Amen? Amen. But you can lose it if you don't use it. Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. My, my, my. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels, you can see it now, with him then shall he set upon the throne of his glory. Everybody say his glory. His glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divide his sheep from his goats. Amen. Now this is going to get nitty gritty this morning. I don't know if you're on the nitty side or the gritty side. Come on somebody. But you got to find your place this morning. Amen. amen. Ain't got nothing to do with the pastor. Amen. Because I can't put you in heaven or I can't put you in hell. My job is just to preach. Amen? Amen? And I'm still learning that. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. He said in verse 34, 
And then shall the king say unto them upon his right side, or right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, and heard the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I like that. Amen. A kingdom already prepared for you. Amen. Now listen now. Pay attention because this, this shifts real quick here. In verse 35, this is where I believe that if you really want to know what the will of God is, and you study this closely, because it's more than what we're reading here, and Jesus is actually talking here, and he wants you to understand this very clearly. He says to them, the foundation of the world, the kingdom of God, was prepared. Amen? Amen. He says, for I was hungry. Pay attention now. And he gave me to me. I was thirsty as all get out, and you gave me the drink. I was a stranger. You didn't know who I was and what I was about, but you took me in. Don't it look like a pattern is developing here? He says, I was naked and didn't have no clothes. I mean, both spiritually and naturally, and you gave me clothes. I was sick. Oh, I was so sick but you still came and visit me. Well, come on, somebody. I was in prison on lockdown and death row, and you came unto me. Then, those who were his sheep on his right side, where the foundation of the world was prepared for them from the beginning, said unto Jesus, because Jesus is doing a two-way conversation with himself, then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hungry, and fed thee in thirsty, and gave thee the drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and we clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? Now pay, pay attention here. He's painting a picture of people in need, and we that are sheep of his flock, has gone out to do the will to help those who are in need. Amen. You see this clearly now? Amen. It's pretty clear. You read this many times before. But he's setting the stage for those who believe in him, who do his will. I want you to understand something. The beautiful part about this passage of scripture is that these men and women of God who were appointed by God was doing the will of God, and they didn't have no idea they were doing it. You see how this thing is unfolding? Look at somebody and say, that's why we need the Holy Ghost. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. Look at somebody and say, that's why I need the Holy Ghost. That's why I need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Then Jesus says in verse 40, he says, and the kingdom, and the king answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least he didn't say saved or unsaved. He didn't say worldly or unworthy. He said, the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Yeah. Anytime you go out and feed the hungry, give thirst to, to those who are uh, water to those who are thirsty, and take in a stranger, or clothe those who are naked, or, or visit the sick, or go to prison. Anytime you do all these things unto anybody, you're doing them unto Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. So don't take it for granted when somebody is sick and you need to go over to the hospital. I ain't got time to be bothered with them. Remember, whatever you're doing, you're doing it unto the Lord. Amen. 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 You're doing it unto God. Amen. When you give someone a glass of water, a bottle of water, if you give them a piece of money, uh, you go and visit them while they're on lockdown. Amen. If they were walking the street and they look like they were losing their mind and you gave them something to eat. You might not know it, but you're doing it under Jesus. Because that's Jesus who's naked. That's Jesus who's thirsty. That's Jesus who's hungry. That's Jesus who's in prison. That's Jesus walking around as a stranger. You don't know how God is going to use you, but if you do what God tells you to do and allow the Holy Ghost to use you like a copper to use this too, then one day, when it's all said and done, he said, well done, my good and faithful servant. So when you have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Oh, my God. Isn't that beautiful? You know now. 
So when you work, are you dealing with folks? Are they need your help? Don't brush it 